Hello everyone, my name is Brad and in today's DLS Quick Tips video we'll cover how to provision your voice over IP desk phone. As of PBX version 5.5, there are over 100 different VoIP phones that we support, with more added on each major release. While popular brands like Polycom, Yalink, Cisco each have their own provisioning method, our two-step auto provisioning process makes getting your phone up and running a snap. For the first step, you'll need to know your phone's MAC address and model number. If you're not sure where to find this information, flip your phone over to the back. Most manufacturers label the model and MAC address of each individual phone with stickers. While it is common to miss the MAC address at first glance, a good tip is that it will be a sequence of numbers and letters 12 characters long. With that information on hand, log into your PBX portal and head over to the System Devices page. Here you'll see a list of all currently added phones, and you can add a new phone by filling in the Equipment and MAC address fields. In the Equipment drop-down menu, look for your phone's model number and click on it to confirm. Type in the MAC address field of that device and click the blue Add button to add it to the server. You'll know it's been successfully added with the green bar at the top. If you get a red bar at the top with a Please Enter a Valid MAC address, you may have entered in the serial number or some other number that is not associated with that selected device's MAC address range. Double check your MAC address or spelling and try Now with your phone added to the server, you must assign it to an existing extension to complete step one of the provisioning process. To do this, head over to User Preferences. Find the extension that you'd like to add the phone to, click Edit. Scroll down to the Handset Options section and uncheck Manual Phone Configuration. Using the Phone Device field, click the drop-down menu and find the model number and MAC address of the phone that was just added. Scroll back to the top and click Save. Once you've added the phone to the server and assigned it to an extension, you can proceed with Step 2 of the provisioning process. Let's run through some examples of how to do this on a few devices. This model is a Cisco SPA509G. We can provision it with a command using the phone's web interface. Once you've added the phone's MAC address to the server and assigned it to an extension, retrieve the IP address by hitting the Settings button. From the Settings menu, scroll down with the arrow keys and then hit the Select button once you've reached the Network option, or for a shortcut, hit 9 on your keypad. Here I'll record the current IP address as 192.168. Dot one, dot two nine. Once you've retrieved the IP address from the phone, go to a computer on the same network, pull up your preferred web browser, and in the address bar, type out that same IP address. After hitting enter, you should land on the SPA509G configuration utility page. To finish the provisioning process from here, simply go back to the address bar at the top and type in forward slash admin forward slash resync question mark http colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of your PBX server forward slash configs forward slash SPA dollar sign capital M capital A capital C dot CFG this is case sensitive, so make sure you have everything typed in correctly. Once you do, hit enter. And on the next page, it'll say it'll resync the phone when not in use and reboot. Your Cisco phone may reboot a number of times while it updates. You'll know it's completed when you see the correct date and time, the name, extension number, and that the phone is able to make and receive calls. This model is a Polycom VVX500. Once set up on the server, plug the phone into your network to begin the last part of the provisioning process. When the phone boots, hit the Cancel button. At the Welcome screen, tap Setup. The default password for this model is 456. With that entered, hit OK. And then Setup on the bottom right. Select Provisioning Server. 
using the speaker button, scroll down to server type, hit edit, and using the volume buttons, switch it over to HTTP and hit OK. Edit the server address next. Change the input mode to numeric. Then type the server IP address using the asterisk key to get your dot. Change the input mode back to alpha. Make sure that the lowercase a is furthest on the left. Pound key to get the forward slash. And finally, type out the word configs. Again, this is case sensitive, so make sure everything is in lowercase. When that's entered, hit OK. Hit exit twice and select save and reboot. After choosing the Save and Reboot option, the phone will reboot a number of times while it updates. You'll know it's finished when you see the correct extension number and name, the correct date and time, and that you're able to make and receive calls. This model is a Yalink T48S. Most Yalink phones are provisioned through their web interface. Once you've added the phone to the server and assigned it to an extension, plug the phone into your network and allow it to fully boot. When it's finished, retrieve the IP address of the phone by pressing the OK button once or twice. Here I'll write down the IPv4 field 192.168.1.30. Once you've written down the IP address of your Yalink phone, go to a computer on the same network and pull up the web browser of your choice and in the address bar, type out that IP address. After hitting enter, you should land on a login screen. The default login for most Yalink phones is admin for the username and admin for the password. On the next screen, head over to the settings menu and on the sidebar, click auto provision. The three fields we'll have to edit here is the server URL, the common AES key, and the Mac-oriented AES key. For the server URL, type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash the host name or the IP address of your PBX server followed by forward slash configs. For these two fields, Head over to the User Preferences page, edit your extension, and copy the config secret. Clear out whatever's in here and paste in your new config secret. With that done, scroll down and click Auto Provision Now. Confirm if given the option. Your Yalink phone may reboot a number of times while it updates. You'll know it's completed when you see the correct date and time, the name, the extension number, and that it's able to make and receive calls.